It's September 1st, 2012, at the rowing semi-final of the London Paralympic Games. All the crews are silent, focused. My legs are shaking with nervous energy, but I can't wait to start. We've had an incredibly successful lead up to the Games, breaking the world record and winning gold in New Zealand at the World Championships. Now, we're finally ready to win our first Paralympic medal. The race starts. All six boats are vying for the top two spots that will secure them a place in the final. We've never been in a race so close. By the halfway mark, all six boats are dead even. But something was missing that day. We're following the race plan, but we're not moving ahead. This is not how it was supposed to play out. As we near the finish line, we make a move, but it's too late. The first two boats cross the finish line and shock sets in as we realize it's all over. We have failed to reach our goal. We sit at the finish line in silence and then slowly start the row back to the dock. But we're interrupted when we're called to the media dock for an interview. The last thing in the world we wanna do right now is comment on what just happened. But we dutifully row over. The reporter seems completely oblivious to our disappointment and frustration when she asks, how are you possibly gonna motivate yourselves tomorrow knowing that it's just the B final? The words come out of my mouth automatically, the way you often hear athletes answering those tough questions. We're competitors and it doesn't matter what race we're in, we always give 100%. It's a pretty standard answer, but as the words sunk in and the more we talked about it, the more we realized those words made sense. If we were to race the B final by just going through the motions without really trying, all of that hard work and sacrifice would be for nothing. The reason that we put in all that hard work was so that we could race our best race at this event. Granted, we had hoped that it would lead to a medal, but for every external goal that you have, there needs to be a deeper internal goal. If we wanted to leave this event with any sense of pride, we needed a new goal. And that was to take all of the learning and sacrifice and use it so that each of us could execute our best performance. That's world-class. Everyone can be world-class. It's not about achieving something of international significance or winning an international competition. It's about your state of mind the choices that you make each day, and the decisions that shape the journey towards your goal. Whether or not you actually get there is less important. Having an external goal, like a gold medal or an A or a promotion, that's inevitable. The problem is you don't have full control over those outcomes. You can't control your competitors or a subjective evaluation, a global pandemic, so many circumstances that are beyond your complete control. When I was trying out for the national team, we had to race in different combinations and find out which combination was the fastest. Most of the time the races could have gone either way, but there was one combination that I realized the other boat was definitely faster than my boat. And so having the goal to win was no longer enough. It was only gonna to lead to panic during the race and probably disappointment in the result. Instead, the new goal was to minimize the distance between their boat and ours. This took attention away from our competitors and gave us an internal goal that kept us calm and focused during the race and allowed us to feel successful even when the other boat won. Being world-class is something that you do have control over because it means doing everything you can to be your very best and that's completely within your control. Racing for Team Canada has taught me a lot about being world-class, but I had already developed this state of mind long before rowing after facing the challenge of going blind. I was born with a degenerative eye disease, which means as a child I could see, but by the time I was 18, I had only a tiny sliver of sight left. As it disappeared, so did my confidence and my independence. Gradually, I stopped going places and doing things until it got to the point where I wouldn't leave my house by myself. Stepping out of your comfort zone is not easy. My house was familiar, 
I wouldn't get lost. I wouldn't have weird misunderstandings with strangers. It was safe. But being comfortable isn't always what's best for you. In fact, oftentimes it's being uncomfortable that leads to success. It gets you to try new things, to test your limits, and to find out what's possible. Alan is my guide dog, and he is one of the things that got me out of my comfort zone. The first time I held his harness in my hand and he trotted off down the street, my heart was in my throat. How could I put my trust in this dog? But as he pulled me gently behind him, moving a little to the right to avoid a person or a bigger movement to the left to avoid a garbage can, every time we navigated around objects safely, it built my confidence and he got me to start going out again. Every time I went to a new place, I found out it wasn't as bad as I thought. And the more I went to that place, the more familiar it became. And then I could go somewhere else until that became familiar. Bit by bit, he helped me build my world back up. And this did more than just physically getting me out of the house. Every time I was afraid to face something and I summoned up the courage to do it anyway, it built up my inner strength, my grit. And grit is the number one predictor of success. Then when I started rowing, I was able to use what I had learned and apply it to my training. Whenever something seemed too daunting or I was afraid to try something, I remembered that I had to summon up the courage to do it anyway because that would make me a stronger athlete. It was four years of developing this grit that got me to the World Championships in New Zealand. It's November 3rd, 2010. New Zealand is just coming out of winter and the winds are stronger than usual. Some of the races have had to be postponed because of the poor conditions, but ours is going ahead despite the strong headwinds. As we start the warm up, my oar catches the water and I think about the hours we've spent training in headwinds. I think about sitting tall and finishing the stroke with purpose. The oars are heavy as we battle the wind, but we're ready. The race starts. Great Britain is out in front. Germany is in second place and we move into third. We are strong and we are still moving. We pick up the rhythm of the oars. By 500 meters into the race, we have cut through Germany. My body is in distress, and for a brief moment, I wonder if I have what it takes to make it through to the end. But my training has prepared me for this exact moment. I've been in this situation before, and I know that I can do this. We increase our speed. Now we're moving on Great Britain. By the last quarter of the race, we are dead even. They take a stroke and move ahead. We take a stroke and move ahead. We battle it out until the last 100 meters of the race, when we kick it into another gear and we surge over that finish line, half a second ahead of Great Britain to win the world championships. Half a second. In rowing, the difference between winning and losing can come down to inches. That's why all of my training, all of my preparation has to be precise. All the little details matter. And that's true if you wanna be world-class in your goal as well. Every day you have the chance to make decisions that will maximize your performance. For me, it can be something as simple as choosing a nutritious meal instead of junk food, or making sure that I go to bed early enough to get eight hours of sleep. I don't wanna jeopardize a training session because I'm too tired or too hungry to do my best. Whenever I'm faced with one of those tough decisions of whether to take a shortcut or work harder, I think, which decision is gonna bring me closer to my goal? When I look back on my training, am I gonna regret some of these decisions? At the end of today, will I feel like it's been a successful day? I don't like how it feels when the answer to those questions is negative. What decisions will bring you closer to your goal? Usually it means sacrifice or more work, but it's that hard work and sacrifice that makes it all worth it in the end. We do a lot of training on rowing machines, and one of our benchmarks is a 2,000 meter test. I've learned from experience that it's not enough to have the goal of a particular time on that test. What's more important is all of the work that you do and the sessions leading up to that test. All of those training sessions, you need to push your limits. You need to make sure that you're not taking shortcuts. 
This is really hard to do. Those sessions are long and extremely taxing on the body. You can have a 100 minute workout and it can be tempting to think, why not just do 90 minutes? Does it really matter if I don't do that 10 minutes? But when I'm sitting at the end of that test, I want to have that confidence of knowing that I made all of the right decisions leading up to that point so that whatever my time is, I know that that's the best I could have done on that particular day. That hard work and sacrifice also prepares you emotionally before the event. The day of a race, I'm always extremely nervous and I often question my ability. But all I need to do is think back on my preparation. I recognize that a race has less to do with what happens out there on the race course and more about all of the preparation that's led me to this point. That gives me confidence and calms me down. Ironically, being world-class takes pressure off because rather than hoping you'll be excellent in that one moment, you have the chance to work at being excellent in smaller moments every day. You have a chance to fail and learn and try again without the pressure of a big win or a single outcome. That's the situation that we found ourselves in the day of the B final. It's September 2nd, 2012. This is it, the B final. A chance for us to prove we are world-class even without a medal. It's a beautiful day. The sky is clear, the water is calm, but that's not what's filling me with this incredible sense of confidence. It's knowing that I can absolutely achieve my goal for this race, and that is to perform to the best of my ability. I'm gonna be laser focused in my attention to technique. And when I'm given the choice of whether or not to push, I'm gonna push. This is all mental. I have no doubt whatsoever that I can do this. The race starts. The noise from the crowd is overwhelming. I don't know how many people are watching us, but it's the biggest crowd we've ever had. They're so loud, I can't even hear the rhythm of the oars. This time, the race plan is working, and we are one of the boats vying for first place. But it's not going to be easy. France is right there with us. The pain in my body increases with the effort, but I only pull harder. We pick up speed. So does France. They are right there with us every step of the way, battling us right to the end. But every time I'm faced with the choice of whether or not to push harder, I dig deep and I go for it. And then I hear it, the beep, as our boat crosses the finish line in first place. Looking back on that race, I have no doubt that that is the best I could have done. My attention to detail, my effort, everything was maximized. But most importantly, I know it was world-class because there was no medal involved. It was all about personal excellence. I still race for Canada. In fact, right now I'm training for Tokyo. I still aspire to win medals and achieve best times. And those are still measures of success for me. But they're no longer the only measures and they're definitely not the most important. Every day I have the chance to feel successful by making the right choices. And by default, in making the right choices, I'm seeing improvements in my performance over time. I can't help but feel incredibly proud of the journey that I'm on, which leads me to believe that whether or not there's a medal at the end of all of this, I will have the thrill of an incredible accomplishment. The boats that we race are about 45 feet long and 110 pounds. It takes a lot to get them moving. I can remember being a novice and how easy it was to get discouraged in a race. You're exhausted and you somehow summon up the courage to push harder, only to feel like it's not working. You're still right beside the other boat. It's tempting to feel like your efforts are meaningless and to ease off. Or the conditions are really poor. It's raining hard and the wind is blowing your boat in every direction. It's tempting to think that the conditions are too rough for you to pay attention to technique and you lose focus. What you learn with experience is that no matter what is going on around you, your job is to get the boat over the line as fast as you can. If the conditions are poor, that means you have to pay even more attention to what your oar and your body are doing. If it feels like you're not moving ahead, that means you have to dig deep and persevere even more and recognize that every little bit of effort you put in is moving you faster. How do you learn these things? You learn them by treating every training session like it's race day. 
if you don't practice laser precision in the timing of your oar, or you don't practice that incredible perseverance through the halfway mark, you're not gonna pull it out on race day. You're gonna race the way you train. You learn it in every training session by not taking shortcuts and by pushing yourself, trying faster stroke rates, attempting a more difficult race plan, finding out what you're capable of. And you learn it when you're sitting at the finish line with all of your brain power and physical energy exhausted, knowing that you've made every right choice. That exhilaration that you feel in your heart, that's world-class. <laughs>